Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's video is gonna be on cortisol dysregulation. An interesting study came by my desk just recently called the Whitehall 2 study. And the Whitehall 2 study actually correlated cardiovascular death. There was a significant association with mortality of a cardiovascular death, heart attack, stroke, etc., and a flat cortisol rhythm. So again, your cortisol rhythm is a circadian rhythm. It's based on light, right? So we have higher amount of cortisol in the morning. So this is your morning time. And then we have a lower amount at night. So it's kind of like a roller coaster, that nice slope. And you can see here the difference between here and here is basically your, your slope. This is your slope right here. So what the study found was the smaller the difference between the morning and the night. So you can see here, this is a smaller slope. The smaller the difference was an increased risk factor, increase for cardio disease, cardiovascular mortality. Really, really important because there are a lot of people out there that their adrenals and their cortisol is like a foreign word to them. They have no idea about it. They know about smoking. They know about asbestos. They know about trans fats. Maybe they even know about sugar and carbohydrates. But a lot of them don't know about your cortisol rhythm and how that can be a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So again, cortisol is there to help mobilize blood glucose, right? It's a glucocorticosteroid. Gluco meaning mobilizing blood glucose and energy. Corticosteroid meaning it helps with stress, inflammation, chronic pain. And what's happening here is we have this nice gentle slope, right? The sun's up higher, right? The sun's up nice and high. And that sun is stimulating cortisol. And then the sun goes down at night and we have the moon. And that moon is then allowing melatonin to come up because of the darkness. So light to dark, high cortisol to low cortisol, and then you kind of have mel melatonin inversing, right? Melatonin is going higher during nighttime, lower during the day. And what happens is when we have dysregulation here, if we go down here, here's the brain, right? The brain is pumping out or basically creating a feedback, creating releasing hormones, this hormone being ACTH. It's talking to the adrenals and it's stimulating cortisol. We also have DHEA coming out of the adrenals too, so sex hormones. This is important because a lot of these sex hormones are neuroprotective, anti-inflammatory, they promote healing. So when we see cortisol rhythms like this, one of the other things we also see, we'll start to see DHEA drop, dihydroepiandrosterone drop. So then our body's ability to control inflammation, heal, have healthy sex hormones is dropping. So we have the adrenals here pumping out cortisol on one side, and then we have it pumping out DHEA on the other. So the more we have stress going on, right? Stress being physical, chemical, or emotional. Physical, car accidents, too much exercise, too little exercise, old sports injuries. Emotional stress being family, friends, work, um, finances, etc. And then the big thing that we focus on, or I focus on in functional medicine, really is the chemical stressors, aka hidden stress, right? These are, do you got a bug, a gut infection? Do you have blood sugar issues throughout the day? Blood sugars are one of the biggest stressors that affects this. Um, are you nutrient deficient? Are you breaking down your food? Do you have toxicity issues and exposed to chemicals? Are you drinking out of plastic bottles? Um, a whole bunch of different issues affect these things. We wanna really mitigate the stress, but what this study showed is when this decreases to here and this rhythm gets flatter, this is an increased risk factor for cardiovascular disease. And we also show what's happening. It's not just the adrenal glands getting tired here. What it is, it's the brain, the communication here being disrupted. That's really what's happening. And we're trying to do things to help fix this. So diet and cortisol has a huge effect because one of the big things that tends to happen at night, cortisol tends to drop when you're significantly fatigued. It can drop, it can be low. And one of the signs we know this is if you're constantly waking up at night, there's a good chance you're waking up because your cortisol is low, which causes your body a difficult time stabilizing blood sugar. If blood sugar drops, this adrenal gland also has to pump out adrenaline. And adrenaline is fast acting energy. It's there to help bring that blood sugar back up so your brain can function, right? The body's very, very sensitive with how it regulates blood sugar. So what it will do is it'll pump out some adrenaline to bring some of that blood sugar right back up. 
and when that adrenaline brings the blood sugar back up, it'll also wake you up because it's very stimulating. So a lot of people at night, their cortisol drops a little bit when they have adrenal fatigue and that can cause you waking up. So if that's happening, we have to eat accordingly. So if you're doing low carb and you're doing high fat and you're you know moderate protein kind of eating plan, and that's a really good thing, but some people with super low cortisol at night, that's hard because here we have protein. Protein can get converted into glucose. This whole process is called gluconeogenesis. The problem is here, it's cortisol dependent. So we actually need cortisol to help facilitate this conversion from protein to glucose. Now, what if you already have low cortisol? So if cortisol is low, you see what happens to this glucose here? So at night, glucose could actually drop and we could be waking up. So that's really important. So we actually have to work on that naturally. And one of the big things we can do with a dietary intervention is just adding in just a little bit of natural glucose, whether it be from fruits. We could just increase our glucose intake, whether it be from maybe some berries, maybe a small teaspoon of honey, maybe a little bit of starchy carb, again, with some protein and fat. So we can do a little bit of glucose, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of protein, and a little bit of fat. We can just increase that naturally. Why? Because our cortisol is lowest at night. So we're gonna have a harder time bringing that sugar up, right, like I mentioned. So if we give a little bit of sugar, if we give a little bit, that's gonna help keep our blood sugar just a little more stable. And we're trying to do natural whole food sources of sugar, maybe with the exception of a tiny bit of honey. Now, why don't we eat that way in the morning? Well, in the morning, typically our cortisol is gonna be higher, relatively speaking. So I actually, for the most part, don't eat any carbohydrates the first half of the day for breakfast and for lunch. The only carbohydrates I may eat at lunch would just be some non-starchy vegetables. Maybe a tiny bit of starch, but for the most part, my breakfast is eggs or a good quality protein shake with um, coconut milk and collagen. And my lunch may be some type of protein or meat and fat with a little bit of non-starchy vegetables. So in the morning time, cortisol is higher, but at night, it's nice to add in a little bit of glucose, protein and fat, and you may wanna do that within one to two hours before bed. So the whole goal is, as cortisol is dropping, we're just giving it just a little bit of, of a boost. We're giving glucose a little bit of a boost because cortisol is not there. So imagine, here's your glucose, right? Cortisol is stabilizing it. This is cortisol. Right? And then what happens is it's like pulling the rug right out from underneath the table because now that cortisol is starting to drop and that support's not there. But if you can bring in just a little bit of a dietary intervention, some of the glucose, protein, and fat within an hour or two before bed, that kind of gives another support right underneath your blood glucose so it doesn't drop. So again, flat cortisol rhythm is a big, big risk factor. We can use diet to modulate low cortisol at night, especially if it's waking you up. And just to understand, right, the cortisol risk factor comes with a smaller difference between daytime and nighttime. And we can do natural things to help fix this. There are adrenal programs using uh, adrenal supports, adaptogenic herbs, as well as diet, lifestyle modifications, and also digging into the underlying stressors. If we have an infection here, or some type of other toxicity going on, that could keep us from healing even with all of these other good natural strategies. So a really good holistic approach is gonna go uh, hand in glove at getting to the root cause of the problem. So again, this is Dr. Justin here. Subscribe to the videos for more updates just like this. And also, there'll be some links on screen and below how to get a hold of me if you need help on this specific issue. Again, have a great day.